with my Asian dad, Tim Kennedy over here. We just crushed a workout and he's taking us to one of your favorite barbecue places in Austin, right. Texas. Yeah, my office is like two blocks that way. Yeah. So this is one of our go-to spots. Um, it's really good barbecue for, for Texas and uh, it's definitely the best in, in Cedar Park. It's in North Austin area. What should I get? What, what do people look for? They got really moist chicken. Um, their sausage is like, bah. the brisket's good. Their ribs are sick. Um, so I'd say like chicken and ribs. Chi I almost never get chicken. I should get chicken here? Yeah, I got, to do chicken really well where it's moist and, it, and, it's, and that it has a lot of flavor in there yeah. and the smoke gets in there, yeah. you know, like that's a hard thing to do. Okay. Now, I'm not just talking like boiled chicken or baked chicken. I'm talking smoked, smoked. chicken. Okay, so I'm getting chicken. And some ribs. I'm getting ribs. And we'll get some brisket. But I have to get brisket every time. Yeah. Everywhere that you go, you have okay. to get brisket. Because like brisket is the thing. Okay. You're good at it or you're not. Okay. Any sides that we should look forward to? We're gonna get all the sides. All the sides. I love it. Let's go. See smoked half chicken. Let's go and start there. Some uh, brisket for sure, some St. Louis pork ribs. So should we do just like big family style? We all just dig in? Yeah, I think so. What's that Texas Frito pie? So it's... Oh, that's not even sweet. No, never mind. No, I have a sweet tooth. You have a big sweet tooth? No. I love peach cobbler. No. Ice cream. No. Okay, I'll let you just order everything. Okay. You don't like stuff like this? Banana pudding? No. What? No. That's how you stay shredded year round. Man, uh, I wonder what used to be here that they don't have here anymore. Oh. Mm, I'm not gonna even say nothing. He just said what used to be here. What beer used to be here that starts with a certain letter? Tim. What up? Tim, this is one of my favorite beers. Yeah, put that back. <laughs> Get something else. I don't care what you have, just anything but that. So we got a one, two, three, four, five, six dudes, and we'll try all the meats. All the meats. So uh, definitely some brisket, def definitely some, uh, how are you? Good. Well, uh, yeah. And uh, definitely chicken. And uh, look at that. Talk to the camera. Oh no, you got one. So that's what I like to see. Brisket. You slice it, and it looks jiggly, okay. with the oils coming out. Because sometimes when you get brisket, it's kind of dry. As you're cutting yeah. it, it looks like leather. You know what I mean? That one is yes, please. jiggalizing. Yep. Let's give us a couple of sausages to try. Look at that jiggalizing brisket. Will you, will you give me a, a slice of that end? Oh, look at that pork rib. So I told you, look at the chicken, the, the chicken and the oh, ribs are the go-to. Look at that, look at that. All look right. at that thing. Wow. So. You ready? Just yeah. palate? Yeah. Fresh? Yeah. This, this isn't one of the ends right there. Just oh. tear that off right there. Oh, dude. Here. Mmm. That's good, right? My, I, I didn't do you guys dirty. I told you it'd be good. Brisket ends. It's jiggly. I got them. Jiggly, like Kim Kardashian. Um. We're gonna do the test here. What test is that? Like the brisket like, test? Yeah, it, the, the marbling, the fat, and the tissue in here. Yeah. So this is the tough stuff. And like, if you cook it too fast, you cook the wrong temperature, it gets like rubbery and gristly. Yeah. You want it just to be able to like literally fall apart, like just like that. That's good brisket. Yeah, like this is, that is, look at this. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you, Heinz. That, that is mm. brisket, perfectly done. Mm-hmm. Very good. Just grab whatever? Yeah. Well, I'm thirsty because Tim killed my ass. I'm thirsty too. Grab this pepper. That's mine. That was my plate. Oh. Well, I didn't you know. Get your own. You have your own plate. <laughs> I didn't know, dude. He was like, this guy. No. <laughs> yeah. You told me to get me going. I'll yeah, like go. off the main plate. Oh. So if you go this plate to okay. your plate. All right, and I'll take like half a sauce, three sauce of the zip. This is like a good plate, right? I got. That's a good plate. Pork rib. Brisket, some sausage, chicken. You said the chicken is good. So chicken I have is to, good. I never order chicken just because I feel like it's such a basic meat that it's so easy to cook it just so many different ways. But he said get the chicken. Okay, 
that's good though. It's good flavor. It's good chicken. Yeah. And I don't even want to qualify it, be like, it's good chicken. It's just good. You know, it's like. Mm. What's that guy? This is their. This is their bar barbecue sauce, and this this is like this uh, chili lime. So that's the play. Yeah, it's it's not regular Texas barbecue sauce either. It's um, it's like this really uh, reduced uh, tomato. Yeah. Way different. It's like a soup almost. Yep. Going. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Veggies. You veggies. Need some veggies. Rounded, healthy diet. Those are good Brussels sprouts. You have to me put some. Thank you. That's good. And it's cobbler, of course. It goes to you. Are you gonna have any of this? Hell no. Okay, that's <laughs> I was putting this over here. Look at this, dude. Look, look at this. It's warm, you feel it? That blue bell ice cream oh. go with it. Yeah, I'm not arguing, it's good. Oh, I might have to eat a little bit of this first. They hooked it up with the ice cream, dude. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not joking. You don't have a sweet tooth for real? No. Damn. Do you have a tooth? Like, do you want like? Do you have a tooth? tooth? You got savory teeth? I like uh, I like coffee. Look at this. You don't want a bite of this? I do not. Guys, doesn't even. Some people don't love food though either. Like, I general. love I love food. Okay, so you like that? Like, food yeah. gets straight. Yeah, I'm ha I'm happy. So something I always wanted to ask you, Tim. Um, you're probably one of the most accomplished humans on earth in terms of physical performance wise in the UFC, special forces, ranger school, sniper, all that. Um, what were you like as a kid? And were, do you think you were always like destined to do crazy shit like that? Yeah. At five, were you like? Yeah. I was a psychopath. Um, pre like cool cameras when they still had like the VHS camcorders on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the home videos. Before I could walk, I'm like five, six months old. My big brother, who's 22 months older than me, he's walking by. I lay there. No, fuck, attack him. You know, I just like start chewing on his You leg. attack him? Yeah, attack him. He doesn't attack you? No, no, no. And, <laughs> you know, so you're the menace little brother. Yeah, I, I'm just the worst, most terrifying, terrible little sibling. Yeah. And uh, Did you bully him growing up? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I was little, I was, I was little for my age, so I had like a chip in my shoulder and everything that I did. Yeah. And really, really early, Laura LaCary, I'm uh, on the kindergarten playscape at uh, North County Christian School in Atascadero. And her mom, really sweet Italian family, does that Italian haircut where they take the bowl, they put it on the head and they like cut around the bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a terrible haircut. Yeah, yeah. It's a terrible haircut. Especially for like a little beautiful little Italian girl, all of complexion. And, and this, this dude, Cody, dick, he's like, yeah, at five. Um, I'm four. It was like, ha, 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 Lori looks like a boy. Laura looks like a boy. And I was like, fuck that guy. <laughs> so I follow him up to the top of the playscape. I crack him in the mouth and I shove him off the top of the playscape. I'm four. At four? At four. You breaks just his arm. socked him in his mouth? Yeah. Oh, shit. He breaks his arm when he falls. And the, the this is when you like still paddle. It's like a Christian private school. So I'm getting spanked. I'm getting paddled by the principal, and I'm laughing at him. I'm literally like, <laughs> you know, like my, my th this is, like, do you know who my dad is? You know, like, do you know how we run at my, my household? You with your ping pong paddle that doesn't even hurt, go get like a one inch belt of leather and come back and talk to me. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll have a talk about discipline, but like what you got going on back there, weak sauce. And this is, but that, that was like, it was very clear early on that I was destined for prison. <laughs> so would you say like being able to kind of channel that kind of energy and, Texas uh, man <laughs> yeah, to be able to channel that kind of energy and that kind of like like extreme like almost social limit into fighting and special forces it was like the healthiest way of expressing that yeah, and, yeah. And, it, and it kept you out of prison yeah I think uh in the past 20 years, we've really demonized like what masculinity is, right? Like men have this energy this yeah. to, to build, to create, to break, to destroy. And if that's not harnessed in a really healthy, productive way, if we're not going and building the Golden Gate Bridge, if we're not building the Chrysler Building, right? If we're not like um, climbing cliffs and storming beaches in Normandy, um, we get dangerous. 
at home. Everywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if you look at all these active shooters, you look at this generation that's broken, it's broken little boys. They're not men. They're just broken little boys. Yeah. So like my, my dad very wisely, very early on was like, man, I gotta get this kid directed at something. Otherwise, things are gonna, it's, it's gonna get bad fast. So yeah, productive energy made me start doing stuff. Mm, we'll see. I like it when you feel like you don't need barbecue sauce, you know, like yeah. it's just so good by itself. What do you look for in a rib? I want sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. So we're like, the fat, you know, obviously they, they, they had some sugars, but ribs are fatty. So if you don't have a really, really, there's no excuse that your rib isn't just falling off the bone. And uh, and I want a little bit of, so I want that savory, I want that sweet, I want a little bit of pepper. Um, and then like texture is key, and then the finish, like the aftertaste. If you don't get that little smoky at the back of your tongue, get out of here. But this one on the other hand, with as active as you are and as many things as you do, do you uh, pay attention tied to your nutrition? Or are you just trying to get some calories and protein in and, and you kind of feel when you're not feeling good? I'm not like doing macros, you know? Yeah. But um, I eat clean. You know, like I'll have barbecue a couple of times a month, but at the house, my wife's an athlete, my kids are athletes, the office is a bunch of athletes. You're um, by it. Yeah, so it's just like, if, if we're getting food in the office, it's, you know, we're getting like Mediterranean with a, a bunch of um, chicken shawarma, you yeah. know, and so it's, we like, eat clean yeah. all you, the time. Does your kid push anybody off the place <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. Let me trade a cold stuff with that tomato thing. He's a, uh, he plays hockey and lacrosse. How old is he? Ice hockey? Yeah. Is that a thing in Texas? Yeah. yeah we have a huge, we have a oh. huge, the semi-pro team is like right on the other side of those trees That's right old. there. How old is he? He's eight. So, uh, and he's playing up. So he's like playing with the 10 year olds. And, wow. this, and uh, one of the little kids that was playing up with Rolo, so he's like a seven, eight year old playing up with the 10 to 12 year olds. One of the 10 year olds, uh, 11 year olds, like just body checks hard this little second grader. And Rolo's sitting there looking at this fourth grader being like, and I just see him. I mean, like I'm on the sidelines and I'm walking, my, my son's waiting to put, be put in and he's like, he just zones in on this kid. Just filming. Yeah, but he just starts moving over to the coach. You know, because <laughs> they like do this rotation as these kids rotate in. Yeah. So he like bypasses a couple of these kids. And now he's like standing next to the coach and he's still just like oh, staring shit. at this kid. Oh, yeah. shit's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So coach, you know, it's not even paying attention. He's like, all right, trade out, go. And, like, and Rolo goes, Rolo doesn't look for the ball. He beelines straight to this kid and floors him. Oh, shit. I mean, like, you know, flag goes up, you know, and Rolo stands over him. And I don't know what he says. You know what he says. What do you say? Like, don't fucking touch my friend. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he gets a flag, gets pulled off the field. He, get, he gets back, he sits down, and uh, he looks over at the, at the kid, you know, and the kid's like, just like looks back over at him. And, uh, and then he like looks up at me, and I'm like, oh, I don't make eye contact. Yeah. Good job, you know. <laughs> yeah, you that's what I was gonna, gonna ask you. Is that one of those things where you go home, you're like, don't do that, or is it a high five at home? Man, it's like righteous justice is good. Yeah, that guy's having a hell of a time in there. <laughs> I don't know if to shoot him or let him go. That's something you don't mess in, mess with in Texas. Is a man's truck. What do you think about the brisket? So I'm looking for everything Tim was saying, where all the fatty parts it just kind of falls apart, and I really like that. Like I was. That was something I noticed earlier. When you go to a lot of the places where the brisket's dry, as they're cutting it, it's already falling off like it's pieces of leather. This one's like jiggling around mm -hmm. and you just see all the oil coming out. I'm like, oh, that's really good. So it's very, very good. I like this. Is this a barbecue sauce or a tomato huh? sauce? Barbecue sauce. Did you try the Brussels sprout? Very good. I like when the barbecue sauce isn't overwhelming. Sometimes it takes over the flavor of the meat. It just adds to it. So good. And you got pickles, onions. How'd you find this spot? Um, we, uh, I'm a fat kid trapped in an athlete's body. But you don't like sweets? Yeah, but I love, I mean like. I like everything else. Mm. I swear during fight camps, I'd be like, do you know what, man? I'll just do another, a couple extra workouts today just so I can eat some more, mm. you know? Um, and then traveling overseas so often, I get to try 
I've been blessed to try so many different cuisines, I like, fall in love with all these different ethnic, ethnic foods. And sometimes the food is really, 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 really bad. <laughs> But yeah. you have to eat it, right? Because you're trying to establish yeah, like, rapport. Yeah, so you're eating goat, you know, or like some nasty ram that they just didn't even take the hair off of and just threw it in the pot. And you're like, God. You know? Oh, God. Which makes you appreciate good food that yeah. much more. Yeah, yeah. So, uh. Do you ever offer like an MRE and then they're like, oh, this is disgusting. What are you <laughs> talking about? No, they don't want our food. They don't want MREs at all? Like, what's what's no, the thing coming out of a I've plastic for, bag? Overseas, I've like cooked for them. Like, uh, oh, that's very cool. Yeah, in South America, um, like done California tri tip, you know, like yeah. done a brisket, yeah, uh, done like an Irish corned beef hash. I was like, yeah. what do you got? You know, like, well, we got a we got a fatty brisket. I'm like, I can do a corned beef hash with that, you know. Mm. Out of um, like your time in the military and then your time as a UFC fighter. The hardest moment in each of them, which one was like the hardest and like what was that moment? Mm. Cause you're one of the few people on this earth that have pursued both like a hundred percent. I mean, losing to anything is not fun. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, like the fight against Yuval Romero, where I was, you know, like winning, thought I won and kind of had it like taken from me. That just sucks. Yeah. You know, um, even the fight with like fought Jacques Ray and Luke Rockhold for the title, and uh, like just losing super close decisions sucks. You know, like yeah. you're just holding your breath, waiting to hear your name, like just the t, t, t of Tim, right? Yeah, yeah. And instead, it's like Luke Rockhold. You're like. In those sucks. moments, do you ever go like? Fuck, had I only been oh. like a full-time fighter nah. and not waste my time with this army bullshit? No, no, it's, it's like a, I, 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 it's more of like, man, had I just done this in the fight, you know, oh, it was never. I see, I see, I see. I'm just blaming me, not my environment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably more healthy. Fighting's one of the few sports where if you don't submit or knock somebody out, it, you're leaving it into someone else's hands. Yeah, you don't Basketball, know. it's 100, it's 99, mm -hmm. I win. You don't know. And there is some right subjectivity going on. That it, obviously, that's got to be more frustrating than anything. Yeah, I mean, they say never leave it in the hand of the judges. Right. You know, like, I, I, I thought for sure I won that UL Romero fight. You know, I thought I won the title. And it's world champion. And then on the decision against, uh, like, you know, that was, a, that was an officiating call. Right. That was bad officiating. Yeah. And then on the decision side when I fought Jacare for the title like I thought for sure I won that fight you know and uh, and then hearing his name called you're just like man that sucks yeah I mean, but is it's, your mentality going to every fight not leaving it to judges because I know like I've never fought announcers always say that yeah. the newspaper says that but what's in your head like oh, I'm always trying to knock a, knock a dude out or choke somebody out yeah yeah I liked uh Actually, like feeling them break. Feeling a person break? Yeah. Like, um. Like little Timmy on the playground? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, uh. At the top of the slide? I mean, you, you, today in the workout, at what point were you like, man, I'm done? I think maybe round seven of the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> the first five rounds, I was like, okay, this warm up is cool. And then I start to feel, like, you know, you start feeling like that. Everything just build up inside, and I'm like, "Fuck, we're doing 15 rounds of this shit." When you're going, when like when you're going with somebody, you know, like you guys are, the pace is going, the yeah. violence is going, yeah. Like, and then they start waning or they start breaking. You hit a takedown, you put them against the cage, and you feel them like take that long exhale, like, "Man, I didn't want to be here." And then you start landing a couple of shots, and they try to scam, scramble up, you pick them up, and you dump them again, you know. And they try to fight up one more time, and then you four dump on a mat return, and then land a couple of shots and you feel them start caving. Oh. You know, you're dragging them deeper and deeper into the deepest depths of the ocean to slowly drown there. Yeah. And that's like, Feels that's good. the feeling. <laughs> that's what so I like. So that's little Timmy yeah. at the playground. <laughs> I was funny. fighting Michael Bisbing. My corner, Greg Jackson, one of the greatest coaches ever to do it. 
we're like in the second round. He goes, why don't you, why don't you just finish him? Like knock him out or submit him. I'm like, I can beat his ass for another 15 minutes. I just want to beat his ass for another 15 minutes. Like I literally just wanted to beat his- You just his, wanted to do it. I just fucking wanted to beat his ass. Did it feel good? It felt so good. <laughs> Is that one of those things if you run into someone on the streets, you're like, I owned you out there. I'm never like that with almost anybody. Michael and I never got along and he had like pissed me off because he had disrespected one of my friends and he had yeah. cheated against another one of my friends in a fight. Yeah. You know, and he's like a smack talker. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was never like a smack talker until I was like gonna fight him. Yeah. And I was gonna beat his ass. And I told him I was gonna beat his ass for 25 minutes. And I beat his ass for 25 minutes. You know. And you run into him today. You guys are friends? No, no never. <laughs> You don't take him to get barbecue at Style Switch Barbecue? No, man, he's, um, he's a hell of a fighter, though. He's like, he's a fighter's fighter. To go out there and knock out Luke Rockhold with that clubbing hook, incredible. You know, the historic career of having to get his eye jacked up by juiced out, roided out, Vitor Belfort, come back to win the title. Yeah, fight with one eye. Yeah, like, come on, man. That's like, yeah. that's some epic Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't mean we're friends. Yeah. But there's that mutual fighter's respect. Like, we both do this for a living, and I respect what he's able to do or not. As a fighter. <laughs> I see. But he's yeah. never coming over I mean, Thanksgiving. Even our, it, no, no, no. <laughs> even in our fight, fight he, did, he didn't ever broke. He never, like, quit. I see. You know, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to feel him find, try to find a way out. And uh, he just kept on fighting. I, I mean, I beat his ass for 25 minutes, and he never took the easy way out. You know, yeah. He could have covered, not intelligently defended himself, and the ref would have stepped in there, and he would have stood up quickly and like called for an early stoppage. You know, you see it all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, no, man, he fought. Yeah. I want to say nice things about him. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> all the stuff that you've been eating. What is your favorite so far? Um, I'm working my way down the chicken. That rib, as you can see, was delicious. Let me suck this off. Oh wow. He's got the lady viewership just went way, yeah, up, way up. Way I can the just see the back up. of the YouTube yep. an analytics. Analytics go, going crazy. Do you like uh, the dark meat or the light meat? I like, I like dark chicken. meat. Me too. I like dark meat. Yeah. I'll grab another rib. Is there enough people? No. Oh yeah, there's plenty. And we can like they literally have lots in there. We can eat as much as we want. Okay. I'll grab one one of these guys. Oh man. So you say you eat pretty clean regularly. What's your like favorite go-to cheat meal? Cheat meal? Or do you do it? Do you believe in cheat no, meals? No, I don't really do them. So you're just always just. But not like, like when I make tacos at home, I'm making elk tacos or bison tacos, you know? Yeah. Um, so I nothing's use, ever crazy. No, like I use Good Ranchers delivery meat to the house, so I get like chicken and meat delivered every couple of weeks. Um, we got, wild, we got free-range chickens at the house, so the kid, you know, like every morning we're having eggs and oatmeal for breakfast, so the kids have, I make them breakfast every morning. Your kids know you're a badass? No. Yeah, they just think dad. Or no. do they think they're lame? A little bit of both. <laughs> my, my big girl thinks think I'm lame. What's the lamest thing that, that she thinks you do? You know, it's always wearing those hats backwards, or. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, Ooh, that's, I mean, that's a hard question because there's a lot. I, I would say... He's always training his dog in the backyard. Yeah, I think the, um, <laughs> the like, can you just not sit down and do something with me? Irritates them. You know, I'm like, hey, let's go like kayaking, you know, like, let's go skydiving, you know, let's go like <laughs> find a velociraptor and try to stab they're, it in the neck. like eight years old. <laughs> you, know? you ever stabbed a velociraptor in the neck? I haven't seen a Velociraptor yet. Yeah, I've been looking. Right? Yeah, sick. I'm down if you're down. I'm down. That one I would do. So they just want you to just, can you just sit on the yeah. couch and... Man, that's hard. I mean, that's a big ask. You know? <laughs> I don't have it in me. Do so uh, they think you're like a hyperactive dad or something? I'm a psychopath. Always, always doing too much? Yeah. That's funny, because like, as a kid, you look up to your dad, and you're always looking up to like these very masculine, macho figures, and you're that. But in their eyes, are like, he's just some lame guy that always yeah. wants to do weird shit all the time. All right, so this is very delicious barbecue. 
First time eating chicken in a bar barbecue spot. I enjoyed it, I love the brisket. The ribs are amazing. If you're ever in Austin, check out Style Switch. Thank you, Tim, for showing us around. My pleasure. We're gonna finish up this food. So stay tuned for a bunch of talk shows because we got a lot of really dope topics and questions that you guys submitted. So stay tuned.